Hello everybody and welcome back to another deck guide. This time we're going to be having a look at some of the new leader abilities, or should I say one of the new leader abilities being Rage of the Sea, which is I think one of the stronger um, ones of the new leader abilities that was added to the game. It is a Skellige leader and it does some pretty cool things which I think makes it quite strong. Um, so this leader ability, what it does is basically spawn rain on an enemy row for one turn. And you can do this three times, you have three charges. So whenever you want, you can spawn one rain on the opposite row, um, or on a row of your enemy, you know, on your enemy side of the board. And then you also get a deafening sign, which is a two point token that will spawn on your side of the board. So basically you'll play for each charge, will play for four points, essentially. Um, so what does this mean? Well, basically this charge can do a couple of things. One, um, it can help you get bloodthirst, which is obviously relevant for things like Dona. Um, it can also be quite helpful for things like your blood eagle. Also, it can be used to try and kill certain units. Maybe your opponent plays, um, an engine. Maybe the card is four strength and you want to kill it. You do three damage to it and then you play rain and then, you know, maybe the, the rain kills it for you, so it can be quite helpful. Also, it has great synergy with Great Swords, which, similar to before, does boost itself, or should I say heal itself, rather, by one every time an opponent's enemy unit takes damage. So you can use this in conjunction with your Great Sword to, you know, get the Great Sword out of removal range. Maybe you play it down, it comes down as five, and the same turn you maybe play your leader ability, and the Great Sword will immediately go to seven, keeping it out of, like, Thunder range or Rebuke range or any other five damage effect. Do keep in mind, this is a leader ability, so you don't want to just use this in round one or whenever, unless it's for a very good reason. So don't just play it whenever, but preferably um, keep it for round three. But you can obviously use it in round one or two if you find a good time or a good reason to play it early on. <clears throat> Um, so basically, that's the point of leader ability. It's going to play for 12 points on average. Um, obviously, if it hits armor or whatever, it can play for a little bit, li a little bit less. But other than that, it's going to basically play for 12 points. Um, <clears throat> that's basically its, its, its baseline value. So then we have Blood Eagle, which still, as before, damage enemy by 2, then play a warrior from your deck with a provision cost of 7 or less. Death Blow, um, so if you kill that unit, you get to play any warrior instead. And if you have Blood Thirst 3, then you can just always trigger the death blow ability then if you have blood those three you can always get whatever warrior you want out of your deck now obviously this deck is um primarily a warrior deck so you can get quite a few warriors out of the deck pretty easily we got hemdil here deal one damage to um a random enemy unit on the row multiplied by the number of units on this row so basically he'll do one damage for every unit on the enemy row so there's five units in the row you'll do five random pings of one damage essentially and if there's six then six and seven whatever so on and so forth it is a warrior card which does have a lot of value with that too then we have herald on crate play a bronze warrior from your graveyard and give it doom and then damage enemy unit well I, I, well there so you're never gonna use in the first form you're gonna use on the second form or the third form mostly the third form which this is a devotion deck so you should be able to get this in round three um play a bronze warrior from your graveyard and give it doom whenever you play a warrior um damage around your enemy unit by one so the nice thing is you can actually resurrect sometimes a great sword and because the great sword is a warrior it will immediately proc the herald the cripple ability so herald the cripple will damage a random enemy unit when he resurrects a great sword meaning the great sword will instantly get procced up to um six strength so that's quite nice in round three getting a six point great on the board right away makes it very hard for your opponent to kill that um so very nice with that also obviously other things with veteran status like a on crate raider um or even invader can make for a quite nice herald the cripple race target in round three uh Svalda totem spawn a fanatic on both sides and order damage adjacent units by two obviously the fanatics do have a berserk ability when they get damaged by two they turn into um they turn to bear nation so basically this is going to play for 12 points and it can help tank some random damage from your opponent maybe your opponent plays some effects that do random instances of damage then they could sometimes eat the damage which can be quite nice helmon on crate banish a unit in your graveyard that damage enemy unit by its power which is very nice because it synergizes great with great swords um so if you can get a great sword in the graveyard it has 10 base strength which means that helmar banishing a great sword can deal 10 damage which is really nice um, it makes this helmar basically a three deal 10 which is a 13 point card with a lot of removal value um, this card is fantastic with the new addition of how great swords have been reworked very very strong in this deck also another side uh, secondary target is an invader invader obviously will eventually in round three strengthen up to seven strength so if you play helm on round three 
He can do seven damage on Invader if you don't have a great on the graveyard or whatnot. So very good card here. Skirtle Veteran, which means every turn is going to strengthen damage enemy unit by Skirtle's base power. In round one, that means it's going to be a three deal three. In round two, it's going to be a four deal four. And in round five, it's going to be a five point unit that deals five damage. So preferably used in round two or three when he's a bit stronger. Um, Vabion, play a raid card from your deck. We have a couple of raid cards, Raiding Fleet, War of the Clans. Um, Blood Eagle's a raid card, and even the Stunning Blows are raid cards, so it should be pretty easy to find value with Vabion. Just a nice little tutor for your deck. Raiding Fleet, give an enemy unit for bleeding, and then play a random bronze ship from your deck. We have two ships. Be careful with the mulligans here. You do need to make sure that you have um, a ship in the deck at all times while you still have Raiding Fleet that you have not yet played, um, as this card can be bricked if you aren't careful, so do be careful with your ships. Make sure you have one in the deck. Donor, damaging it by two, Bloodthirst to damaging it by four instead shouldn't be too difficult to get bloodthirst in this deck and quite nice removal value with that um, nothing else really to be said about that so Herkia split three damage ram between all enemy units on a row at the end of your turn if order is not used damage the ram enemy by one so every turn essentially this card is going to do one random damage and at any point you can use the order ability do three damage at one shot randomly in one row but then she'll no longer get one random damage every turn um, if you use the order ability. So if you think she's safe, just keep her on the board. She can do one damage every turn. If you think she might get killed, just use her ability, order ability, stride or whenever you, you feel like she's under threat and get the value instantly. War of the Clans, damage enemy unit by two and then death blow, play a four provision war bronze warrior from your graveyard um, and give it doomed. If you have devotion, always trigger death blow. So basically this is going to do two damage and because it's devotion deck, you're always going to be able to resurrect any four provision bronze card in your graveyard. So make sure you get a four provision card in your graveyard for the later rounds so that you can play this to resurrect one of them <clears throat> so on create greatsword now this is it still works um basically the same as did before but it has a basically a limit on how high it can go so it has 10 base strength when you play it will damage self by five so it'll come down as a five point unit and then whenever the enemy unit takes damage it'll heal self by one in other words um, instead of boosting itself, it's going to heal itself. So it caps out at 10. Once it gets a 10 strength, it will stop boosting itself any further um, or healing itself rather. So that is basically how it works now. No longer you can get like massive 20 point great swords, but it has a higher floor. It's going to come down as a five instead of what it used to do. It's come down as a four. So it has a bit of a higher floor um, with a lower ceiling. Drum Berserker at the end of your turn, damage self and a random enemy unit by one Berserk three. So in other words, when this card um, reaches three strength, it'll transform into a six point bear abomination. So for two turns, it'll damage a random enemy unit and then it'll transform into a bear abomination, making this a basically an eight point card, um, which is not bad. On Crate Longship, whenever your opponent plays a unit, deal one damage to it. So pretty good value in the long round i'm um, just a nuisance for your opponent to deal with that obviously on crate raider veteran so in other words in round one it'll be four strength in round two it'll be five strength and in round three it'll be six strength order damage enemy unit by two if you have bloodthirst three it gets zeal immediately um just a bit of an annoyance for your opponent helps set up removal value can be used in conjunction with things like war of clans or maybe a donor or whatever to kill opponent's threats um very threatening card sometimes stunning blow deal four damage to enemy unit if it has armor increase the damage to six nothing really else to be said about that invader just a big body um in round one it's only gonna play for five points in round two it'll be six points and round three it'll be seven points because of the veterans tag um drown villager give it bleeding three to an allied unit then give bleeding three to enemy units so you want to be using this card on typically things like your veil units things like Herkia or um an invader or maybe even your herald or cripple in round three because it's is a veil unit or if you really need to you can also use on a greatsword because when the greatsword takes damage it doesn't really matter because the greatsword will still heal itself so it is okay to use this on a greatsword if you need to um on a crate warrior given enemy bleeding for three turns if played from the graveyard damage enemy unit by three instead so when you use this with war of the clans the war of the clans will do two damage and then this card when resurrected will do three damage which means that war of the clans essentially will do up to five damage um which is quite nice removal value um so that's basically the deck i think it is quite strong i played a couple of games of this it definitely was one of the better elite abilities that i played so far with the new um patch with adding the new leader abilities. i think it's quite strong and we'll jump into a few games and see how we do in practice okay so first game we're up against shield wall now shield wall eh, it can be slightly tricky but let's see we have got some new tools of our own so let's see if we can beat the mighty shield wall let's mulligan away i guess a war of clans don't really want in round one um other than that the hand looks kind of okay i'm not sure if i want double great sword though yeah i guess maybe double great so just win round one play all our engines round one try win around one of the great swords maybe that's fine let's do it let's keep the hand like this honestly it doesn't look too bad 
So I want to win on one, and then um, we'll see from there. So I'm going to start with this. And I guess I'm going to T8. The boats can be quite annoying for him. Boats can be very, very annoying for him for sure. Ooh, Rognar deck perhaps. Interesting. So this is actually quite annoying. The ram damage on this can be very, very irritating for me. Um, it means I don't want to play my Hercules round for sure. It also means I kind of want to play this. It's actually very, very annoying. Holy crap. Um, I'm going to play this for now though. Might get answered, but this is definitely going to be quite annoying against me. It means Hercules is kind of bad. It means this is kind of bad too. A lot of things are just not very good right now. So, random damage, not good right now. Random damage, very, very bad. So, I guess you're probably going to play a second grade Slash Rance. He plays Amphibious Assault. That's kind of aggressive. Or a Royal Guard. Okay. I think I'm going to get a Raiding Fleet for a second boat, and then I'm going to play another Great Sword too. Again, again, again. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and put a second Great Sword on the board. And these should play for 10 points each, it looks like, which is nice, obviously. Again, this is very annoying, this Immortal. It means Hokia literally can't be played right now, which is quite unfortunate. Okay, so I can't really kill that yet. I just must play this. Hopefully the ping doesn't hit the Immortal. Okay, I'll at least hit the Immortal, but it's not exactly a deal. Um, okay, that's definitely a Rognor deck. Definitely a Rognor deck, which means all our random damage is quite bad. Um, I think I'm going to get one of these out of the graveyard. Because they do help set up my Blood Eagle later. Not my Blood Eagle, rather, my War of Clans. Okay, so he wins round one. Uh, well, I win round one rather, but spend a lot of my engine power. Um, I feel like I want to bleed round two actually, which a little bit awkward for me because I'm not exactly the deck that does very well at bleeding. But because it's a Rognor deck, it feels like bleeding might ne need to be necessary. But we'll see. Um, this is practice, so I kind of want to keep that. Um, Yes, I'm holding this, and I'm probably going to start with this. I think I do need to bleed a little bit, honestly. So I'll play that, and then I might just go Hokia next, do a little bit of a bleed. Um, it can be kind of difficult to bleed here, but I think it might be necessary. Again, then again, I guess our leader ability can break a lot of shields, which maybe is not the end of the world. So he plays one of these. Okay. He might go... Boiling oil here, if he plays boiling oil, but we'll see. Oh, okay. Sometimes the price is too damn. So, if I get lucky with the pings, yeah, I might be able to kill that. And we got relatively unlucky. Um, in that case, I guess... Yes, we're doing that. I would like to get a pass, but it doesn't look it's going to happen. If I pinged off the shield there, maybe I could have killed that. Pinged it at least twice. So he goes assault, pulls out the def pulls out of Vandergriff. Yikes. Yeah, I'm not my card back, apparently. Um, okay, so it's definitely a full-on Rognar deck. I'm going to pass here. 
Don't really think I'm getting my card back. Not even going to try at this point. Um, okay, so he played the Visor Goat. He got five points of carry, which is quite annoying. But he did also use a leader charge. He still has Ancess. He still has Ragnar. I can break shields, make that Ragnar a lot worse, at least. Um, Kiyama's obviously good. I would like Totem or Hemdor. would be kind of nice. Okay, I got the Totem. That's nice. I got Hemdor too. So we can just play Blood Eagle for pure value, I guess. I'm gonna do that. Raise back the greatsword. And then I'm probably gonna try kill that Anna with a Skirtle or something. Maybe Hjalmar. Couple of ways we can go about doing this. Um, so I could skill all this and then deal with that. I guess I'm going to do this first. Yeah, let's do it like this first. If he gives another shield, then he can't shield and unsay, which is kind of good for me. Okay, so, 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 so. Why you Blood Eagle a Raider, I think? Artificer. Magic can work wonders when used correctly. So we want to try get some bloodthirst. Um, let's see what he does about this Anna. <clears throat> Definitely seems to be a Rognar deck. However, I think he's using Fabius Assault twice. If I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, he has. So he shields the Anna. I think I was going to play the early Hemdal, so I pinged the shield with Viana. Fortunately, I didn't. Let's see if that maybe pings Viana. Still not pinging Viana? Yikes. That's kind of annoying. So I guess I got a Dono on the Anna. Plays the Unsays, okay. Pings that instead, okay. So... I guess before I lose my blood thirst, I'm just gonna do this. And then we have Totem and Hjalmar. Hopefully it'll be enough. Unfortunately, Anna will survive for the time being, but Rognar, not many shields on the board, so it doesn't look too threatening. This Bloody Baron isn't really doing much either. I guess we could just Hjalmar the Great, the Bloody Baron, before it resets anything. So I'll take a big Hjalmar here. Unfortunately, I'm going to play the Totem last, but I don't want that Bloody Baron 
Well, I guess by Ban Reasoning, this maybe I should just play the Totem first, actually. But we've got a pretty big point gap here. Should be fine. The last two cards are probably Rognar, which isn't going to do much. And something else. Don't know what the other thing is. But it looks like we should be pretty okay here, I think. Fallible. Fallible's pretty big, but... Unfortunately for the opponent, Rognar isn't really going to do a whole lot. And this should be an easy win. Um, 21 point gap. Rognar's looking quite sad. Should be... Very small Rognor, like a 10 point Rognor. Yeah. Alright, so. That was a pretty weird game. Um, some very interesting things. You've got to not playing me. Interesting. Anyway, let's play another one and see how we do in the next one. Okay, so next up we're going to be against Nilfgaard. This might be some kind of Hyperthin deck. Um, tactical decisions. So, long round should be pretty good for us if we can get a long round. Uh, what do we want to mulligan here, though? I guess we can mulligan away an invader. Probably doesn't really do much in round one. That's a little better. Can I use this in round one? I guess I can on Herc here. Stunning blow. Yeah, I guess I can kill a Mang Division or something. I guess I'll just keep this hand. Um, so I'd like to win round one, and a long round three should be pretty okay for me, I would think. So let's try and just win round one, and then probably take a long round. So start with this. Um... I guess you Tiana dies to assassination, my hook here anyway, so not gonna bother with playing Tiana, that's gonna let it sit. Okay, so he plays assassination, sure. Um, I'll play this for now, and then I'll play the um I'll play the Raiding Fleet next, so might get Tony Jousted. Let's see if he's got more removal. If it does get Tony Jousted, then I'll just TA Hook here. Okay, he goes for Tony Joust, sure. So it's gonna be a little bit uninteractive, fine. I guess we'll do this. T8 as well, play around the second assassination. And let's see what he tries to do then after that. Okay, so he finally plays a Mag Division. I guess I'm going to stun him by that. And then I might go Raiding Fleet next. I'm not sure. So he's going to go Mena for Marching Orders for Vigo. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I guess we just play this then. And then I think I'm gonna go Blood Eagle for a greatsword. <clears throat> okay, so he's doing all this thinning now. Um I guess I'll come down as a six so. Eh, I guess could play in second assassination, but that's gonna have two assassinations in hand. Seems somewhat unlikely. He does have two assassinations in hand. <laughs> I guess I should have played in the front row then. Whoops. Um, so I guess I'll play this then. And then we do have Bloodthirst too, so I can play Donar, which is nice. Um, we are getting a couple of points a turn, so... Plays Treason. Strange. Go ahead and do that. Hopefully it gives me a pass. Likely will give me a pass. Um, I think. I kind of played into all the cards this round, but didn't expect him to have this much tactics in his opening hand. He actually kept every single tactic in the universe in his opening hand. Um, but it still looks like we're in a pretty good spot to win round one, I think. Or at least for some good cards of him. Okay, so we win round one. That's nice. Then we just take a long round three and probably be quite happy about it. Um... Do we ever go for a 2 0? We need to draw a very specific hand to justify going for a 2 0. I'm a little bit worried about playing him playing Nova in round 2. Um, try a 2 0 and Nova, though, it's kind of difficult. Um, I think I'd rather just probably take a long round 3 against this. Yeah, 2 0 with this hand is. Uh, it doesn't really seem exactly like it. Not without Totem, don't have enough proactivity to justify a 2 0. I think. Because if I don't get a 2 0, I'm kind of dead. I think I'm just going to take a drive past, take a long round three. My 
the stick works best in the long round. So he plays a Nova, he gets 83 points of carry over. He still obviously has some big points, but so do I. Hjalmar's gonna play for a lot. Um, need to draw the totem, however, and I'd like to draw. Does War of Clans actually do anything right now? War of Clans does do something, because we've got a village in the graveyard, which is nice. Got the totem, which is nice. Got the Fabion, which is nice. Hjalmar can get the Blood Eagle. I think this hand looks kind of okay. Maybe I don't want this, actually. Okay, I've got the Hjalmar, then I can take something else with it. That's a bit better. Alright, so... Let's see what happens then, I guess. So I can deal with that whenever. Um, I guess I just found one little issue we have with this hand. If I go bloody... If I go... <sighs> what am I going to heal? I guess I can heal more of 6. Unless I just go with this with the... I guess I can just do this on a raider. That's probably fine. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's take a raider. Because then we can go heal more on the great sword, which is a little bit better, I guess. So he's ready to use both assassinations. Killing my Herald Cripple could be difficult for him. So he goes for War Council now. What exactly is he looking for? Battle prep. Okay. I guess then I'm gonna have to just kill that like this right now. Just go ahead and kill that. And I probably wanna play my greatsword soon. So he's obviously going to have a lot of points with things like Volgafort and Zalthusius and Yennefer. He goes leader now and he's going to get a fun out, obviously. So he's thin to zero. So that is a lot of thinning. Thin to absolute zero. So he's going to put a fun. Um, he's going to put Tibo and whatever else in, back in his deck. So his Arthesis is almost guaranteed, it's 50-50. We'll do this, Great Sword will come out as a 7, which is quite nice. Here's Arthesis, hope he doesn't high roll. Hits the 13, so you got the 50-50, pretty good for him. Um, play this now, I guess. Take on the War of Clans. Alright, and then, I guess next up we probably play... What are we doing with Blood Eagle right now? I guess we Blood Eagle out a... Raider, I suppose. Yeah. Women, children, elders, we spare none. Um, so Totem's gonna play for twelve, so he plays the end for now, that'll be guaranteed onto a thirteen point T ball. This will play this then. May as well use the rain here then, and then, so his last cards are Volgafort and something else. Invocation apparently. Over my dead and cold body. The last card of his is going to be Volgafort. Um, so Volgafort eats a two of his. And pulls out the 13. And pretty close game, however. Um, oh, I pull out the 6 actually, because he, <laughs> he 
Yeah, you shouldn't have played the Volva Forts. You should play the Volva Forts first, I guess. Pulls out the six. A little bit of a misplay from the opponent there. Um, but yeah, that was actually quite a that was quite a spooky one. Um, Pun got some pretty good rolls there in round three, but obviously that last invocation ends up messing up a little bit. But anyway, let's do one more game and see how we do in the last one. All right, so we're up against. I'm not even entirely sure what this leader ability is. <laughs> That's a new one. Um, imprisonment. Lock enemy unit and damage it by three charge two. Okay, interesting. So new Nilfgaard ability. Mulligan away this in round one because you never want to really keep that in round one ever. Mulligan away this because it's not very good in round one either. And I don't think we want two of these either. Um, we want one to get in the graveyard, but that's about it. So this hand is actually quite iffy. I'm not really too happy about this hand, but... It is round one, so hopefully we can fix it later on. So for now, I'm just going to play this. And what do we expect from this leader ability? Probably some kind of control deck. Um, not entirely sure, though. We'll have to see. We'll start with the boat, and then hopefully the boat survives. Hand is definitely a little bit iffy. Hopefully we can find a Blood Eagle, Vabjorn, and all the other stuff later on. Mars Great Ball. So it's probably going to be a double ball deck, which means we need to be careful and lose on even. Lose on even, obviously would not be great for us so i need to figure out how to get out of this round asap that is going to be the goal here just to get a pass and not lose on even which is gonna be hard this hand is quite weak and our opponents looks like he's playing double balls so not losing on even might be very very difficult for us but we'll see so i'm gonna kill both the thirsty dames for now he's gonna poison this obviously but then i'm just gonna play another Raiding fleet, and hopefully that will um, maybe get us out of this round. So we'll play this, and yeah, we need to try to figure out a way not to lose on even, um, which could be difficult. Double ball, bad coin for us, could be a nightmare to get out of this round. Um, he got the opening hand with the masquerade ball. He should be in a pretty good spot, and I've got a very, very bad hand, so. This is going to be a tough game. Let's see if we can win it. He's got a second Thirsty Dame as well in his hand. Yikes. Well, hopefully he doesn't have Vincent 2. That's all I can say. If he's got Vincent 2, I'm just kind of dead. But let's see if he has Vincent 2 or not. He's got a Rot Tosser, which makes this, German vi this village actually really nice. Yeah, I can use the village on this. and I believe it does kill the Rot Tosser, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to play the Greatsword now. Greatsword, of course, will get some decent value here. And if we could just make sure we get out of this round, that'll be great. So I think I'm going to go ahead and play this. And then I think I'm probably going to get out of this round, like, soon. Um, okay, so... Don't actually get a pass here just yet, so I guess I'm just going to play this. Prefer not to play this, but I might have to play this as well. He uses a leader charge here as well. And this guy really wants to win an even. He's committing quite a bit to do so. He plays Van Hemmer as well. Okay, so I guess he will just win an even then. Um, got quite a lot out of him at least. Um, is it enough to get out to win this to win this game? I'm not sure. But he did commit Bravens, a leader charge, Van Hemmer, some of this other stuff. 
He has double final say, which is pretty big, um, especially against a mid-range deck like this. But that being said, he committed quite a bit to do so. Let's see if it's going to be enough for him, however. We got our graveyard fully set up. We got a lot of gold cast on the deck. Hopefully, we can find something. I don't think I want this in the hand. I want something bad to drive parcel with. I guess I'm going to drive parcel with that. So double final save for him, which is very good for him, very bad for me, but had a big cost. He committed a hell of a lot to do this. Um, so we're looking for Totem, we're looking for yeah, quite a few things actually. Definitely not the cards I'm wanting here. Those were not it. Damn, Miss Totem, Hemdal, and and my Herald Crop. I mean, if we win this game, that'll be quite something um i don't really think we have any business winning a game after everything that just happened because now we don't have any proactivity so we've got to play a three point card so this game should be pretty much unwinnable but maybe maybe miracles happen here i mean he did commit a hell of a lot in round one but man this round three very very sad so he's gonna shuffle back the masquerade but obviously he's gonna play it again not much i can do about that unfortunately but i guess for now we'll just go go ahead and do this um, It's a blood eagle for myself at least. Man, missed out on so much here. Let's play the Neuromancy for the Masquerade Ball. Sure. I think we'll go ahead and kill that before anything else. Then play the Blood Eagle next for a Herald the Cripple. Fortunately, no Totem, no Hemdal. Really, really sad draws for us, but nothing I can do about that. Leader Blood's also quite bad right now. I guess we'll just do this for now. Use a leader charge now then. Okay, so he's another leader charge of his. Plays the Vince to kill the Herald a couple, I guess. And then I guess we got Hjalmar next. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. I mean, he doesn't really have much left at least. Um, plays a Rot Tosser. So we got Hjalmar here. And I guess let's see if that's enough. I mean, we do have a 20 plus point gap here. Not sure what his last two cards are. Some kind of aristocrat and something else. Could be like a Roderick or that, I guess. Let's see what his last card is going to be. has to be quite a few points. Invocation will not be enough. Wow, despite all of that, we actually still won this game. We missed out on quite a few cards here and still actually took a win. Um, so that's actually pretty nice. So... There you guys have it. That is the deck. It's been performing pretty well for me so far. We're almost at 2,500 with it. And yeah, it seems like it's quite a strong deck for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Like I said, this does this is very similar to what Skelliger was in the past, but with a new leader ability. I think this leader ability is quite strong. And if you guys have any questions about this deck guide, don't, feel free to ask um, in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to try to answer some questions if you guys ask me. And if you want to watch me stream some games, I do play Gwent every day. So check my description out for the link for my stream. Come by and ask me any questions if you guys have any further questions about this deck you want to answer live. Anyway, take care guys and bye-bye.